Hi there, I'm Megfer, and today I want to show you this, which is a new binary counter I've done. I did do a video on a binary counter before, which could only count upwards. This one can count upwards, but it can also count downwards. And actually, I've just realized that you might think that I'm just playing the video in reverse. I'm not. Uh, it actually does count downwards as well. Um, but like my previous binary counter, this one is also fully synchronized. It has instant carry, so your outputs are always correct. Okay, and it has a reset to zero, and it can also allow you to set individual bits to be on or off. Okay, so that's the binary counter I'm going to show you today. But do check out my previous video, video which has got a bunch of mechanics in it, which explain in a bit more detail how this works. Okay, so let's dive straight in. This binary counter does need to be chunk aligned, so I've marked out a chunk quarter here, and my chunk goes off in those directions over there. And I'm going to come in by to the fourth block along, and I'm going to place a comparator on that block, like so. I want a block above the comparator, and another comparator on there, like this. Put both of those into subtract mode with the front torch lit, a block by side. With redstone dust going into there. I want a temporary block behind both and we're going to put observers powering those comparators like this with a torch on each, sorry a torch, a lever on each one. Go to these blocks for now. So this will be our um, way of incrementing and decrementing the um, binary counter. Okay so next place a solid block on the front of each comparator, a redstone dust just here, a target block connecting up to that redstone dust, and then here I want an upwards facing dispenser with a powder stone bucket in it, like this. A solid block just here, and we're going to read that dispenser through that block, and I'm going to place a glass block directly down like this with a comparator on it, like so, okay? Now, two more blocks on the face of that comparator, two blocks underneath, don't need that one. I'm gonna put redstone dust on both of those, like this. I want a block above the comparator, a temporary block just here, so I'm gonna place a piston facing upwards on there, and a normal piston with a obsidian on top to make sure it can't move. I uh, can break this block now and place it redstone dust here and redstone dust on here. I want a torch on that um, piston here and a solid block above the target block again with redstone dust on it. So that torch will power this. That will go into the side of this comparator down here. Okay. So what we can see now is that when we have a powder stove bucket inside here, it'll power this comparator signal to for two. That'll power this redstone and this redstone, power the piston, and therefore turn off the torch. I want to do the same kind of thing underneath, but it's going to be inverted. So this comparator now is powering this dust. I want some more blocks underneath. Dive me down, come out by four blocks. I want a redstone dust just here, going into a target block, a repeater, where's my repeater, uh, just here, and that's got to power a redstone dust, which will go into the side of this bottom comparator, okay? I don't need that block. So that's basically it um that will work our output would be here our official output would be here although i'll show you a few things about the output in a moment what we do want to do though in fact let me just show you first um so with it being a one bit counter it's not very exciting if i count up or down it just turns it on or off fine and what i want to do is i'll extend this out to 15 bits in a while but I also want a mechanism to be able to reset it all to zero. 
and also to be able to set or unset individual bits. Okay, so how we can do that. Place a glass block above here. Then I want one, two, three solid blocks along there. A comparator on this one into a redstone dust. Turn around and here I want, uh, I'm going to grab my dropper facing towards comparator, a hopper just here, pointed back into that dropper, break this block. And we want a non-stackable item, I'm using a bow, in that dropper. So when a drop gets powered, it'll push that item into the hopper temporarily. That'll power this comparator to signal strength three. That'll come down here, one, two, and three. This doesn't look like it's joined up, but it actually is. That signal will pass through the corner of the piston there, and that will then power the dispenser. Okay. Put a button on here, and that will allow me to set and unset individual bits. So you can see this is off at the moment. If I click on there, the powder snow gets sent up, and this comes on. Turn it off again like that. Okay, so what about the reset? Uh, to reset it, I want a target block just here with a torch on it underneath this block and redstone dust on top. Then we're going to power this redstone dust with a torch by coming out by two blocks like that and put a torch on the side of here. That'll power that redstone line. Under here, I want to put a temporary block and come out diagonally, come across this way, and just before we get to the observer, come up a block like this. And we can put a button on here, redstone dust along here, and that is my reset. So if I set this, what happens now is the powder snow gets sent up. This now has an empty bucket. It's giving signal strength one, which means that this target block isn't powered. It's only powered by this torch. And if you imagine that we were all the way along, you know, some of these bits would be powered, some unpowered, and those which are um, which have the powered snow still in the in a dispenser, this target block will be powered. So when I turn off this top line, the target block will still be powered. Hence the torch will stay off. And this dropper won't get powered, okay? That's how we make sure that we only um, switch the ones which are already on. So let me do the reset and you can see that goes off. Okay, again, with one bit, not very impressive, but uh, that is basically our system now complete. So what I'm going to do next is I will extend this to 15 bits and then I'll come back. So there we go, I've just cloned it along and these are all exactly the same design except that this block isn't required on all your slices. But that is 15 bits, that's the maximum you can go to because it relies on the signal strength of this redstone line along here. So you can't go any further than 15 bits. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an output temporarily up here and we'll talk about uh, the different ways of doing an output. But let's use a redstone lamp for the time being. All the way along there and what we should be able to do now is we should be able to count upwards so if i click that i get a one two three four etc but i can also count downwards so four three two one zero and if i count down again it'll cycle around and you can see that um that's counting along like that. The reset button is here. Press that. Everything get reset. And that happens correctly, whatever you've got configured in your counter. Okay. That's basically it. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect it up to a, a clock just to show you that it can run at 10 game ticks. So I'll be back in two ticks or maybe 10 ticks. Here's my 10 game tick clock, and you can see uh, it's just a repeater on four redstone ticks, uh, a torch which has one redstone tick. So the period of this clock is actually one second, it's five redstone ticks on, five off. 
and but we're powering these rails and they will go on and off every half a second so the observer gives us a 10 game tick pulse so if i um, turn off the the power to one of these rails you can see this is the countdown timer and it's counting down and the problem with redstone lamps is that they come on immediately but they take uh, two ticks to turn off so it doesn't look quite synchronized if you watch the snow underneath the powered snow underneath then that is fully synchronized but the lamps themselves not so that's a bit of a problem let's reset it and i'll show you the counting up as well there we go Both them on and let's reset okay so what are we going to do about that um there is another problem with this as well actually which is if i just do count down for a second if i want to set individual bits because this line from here is running through the um the piston here when i set individual bit let's say i do this one here you see that the the bits on either side flash as well because the signal strength is free when it gets to these pistons and therefore it um, actually powers three of them at once so that temporarily changes our output now if it's just you know for um, something you want people to see that's not that important but if you are using this in you know any sort of computational use then having your outputs correct and synchronized is kind of the whole point all right so that's why i said this is our official output down here and uh, these torches can be used as a an output to another system um, and that's absolutely fine if we want to make our visual output synchronized we can do that using pistons so i could put a line of pistons along here and what i'm going to do is i'm going to just use a sea lantern on each of those like this and I can use that as my visual output with you know maybe blocking this off so that you can't see all of that and we can make it look a bit pretty as well there we go where I reset they all turn off and when I set it to count you get a properly synchronized visual output so that's why I don't particularly like using the lamps up here although you know if, if that's fine for you that's fine uh, but if not you can use the outputs at the back here if you find it more convenient to have this as a two wide circuit then you can actually do that you just need to miss out every other slice make sure that you've got these three redstone lines the bottom middle and top one going all the way along everything else you can just leave out and it will work exactly the same as an 8-bit, two-wide binary counter. And if you're powering an onward circuit, say from these torches at the back here, then that might be easier in some circumstances. Okay, so that's up to you. It can either be 15 bits and one wide or 8 bits and two wide. That's it. That's all I've got to show you today. Thank you very much for watching. And keep an eye out if you're interested in binary counters for my video on a really really fast binary counter which works at four game ticks instead of 10 game ticks okay so that'll be one of my future videos thank you very much bye bye